everybody, welcome to Halid RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and this is awesome for camping families right here, especially like half ton families or like big excursion type owning families. This is the uh, Alpha Wolf 26 DBH. I almost called it the Gray Wolf 26 DBH because Cherokee makes this same floor plan in both the Stick and Tin Gray Wolf as well as here in the laminated sidewall Alpha Wolf. And that is really, I think, one of the key things on this floor plan. Maybe you've seen, like everybody and their brother builds a floor plan like this. It's a really good camping floor plan. It's something that if I camped more, because I camp at a no slide bunkhouse, I'd really love the extra space that you get from the big uh, super slide here. But there's a lot of people go, okay, I like that gray wolf, but I really don't like the tin skin. I want aluminum framed walls. That is right here where this one comes in. But it also brings with it, like we have full front to back, door to door traveling access. It's what I call totally turtle friendly, dude. We've got a cool little mini cam kitchen with an, uh, an interesting color ice maker. I don't know if that's the color they intend to leave on it for the rest of the year, but at least this one definitely caught my attention. Direct bathroom access door with a deadbolt. Uh, if you've never had one of those, I don't know if you realize how much dirt you track in and out going in and out of the RV just to go to the bathroom. Having that door down there all the way just, just lets you straight into the bathroom, plus a mini fridge outside. This is easier to keep clean, great to keep the family entertained. We have enough space with that super slide on a rainy day where if we're stuck in here, we're not just gonna wanna love each other to death. You know what I mean? You ever just love your kids to death sometimes? And what you're gonna find in this thing is just good solid execution of straightforward family fun camping concepts. We got nice light bright colors here, but a little bit of contrast on the furniture. And I think some people, especially in a bunkhouse, they don't mind a little bit of darker furniture right here, especially where the people and kids are going to be sitting. And if you need to sleep, everybody, you got the sofa, the dinette, the double bunks, the master bed up front. You could squeeze, I don't know, six, eight, nine in here, depending on where you're sleeping, everybody. I, uh, I brought a tape measure out with me, though. Uh, I know that that dinette over there, that's like a nice big, like seven foot dinette, basically. It's something like 40 plus inches deep. Nice big adult size sleeper. But these sofas, it's about uh, 60 inches wide. So it's about five feet wide. That's going to be a good spot for either like a little kid or maybe a Doberman. I don't know. That's really bad. I'd throw a blanket on that. I'd let my dog crash for the evening. Actually, I'd rather have my dog sleeping on a blanket on the couch than on the floor. Because when I wake up uh, in the middle of the night, I'm I'm a zombified idiot. And uh, during the day, I'm just a non-zombified idiot. But what I'm getting at... <coughs> is the fact that I will trip over a dog. Even though I know it's there, I'll still trip over it in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, couple things I wanna point out here, uh, for the sake of being fair, we have limited door side window coverage, and we only have one slide side window, the one that you just saw, and it does not open for airflow. It's just an interesting thing that they do uh, on this brand right here. I think, what do we want to do? Do we want to go ahead and just crack the kitchen open? Let's do that. We're going to kick it off with triple plywood drawers down to the floor right there with a handy sectionalized top drawer for like your uh, utensils and whatnot. Little mini wastebasket space below this beautiful black stainless skirted sink. That just has a dynamite look to it. Now, uh, when we get up top here, a little bit of extra information for you, the kind of thing I don't think a lot of places would share this because... Uh, it's not going to likely be viewed as positive. This is uh, made with what's called MDF cabinetry and stapled fasteners. It's it's a compressed particle board with a sticker wrap and stapled fasteners. And you know what? RVs have been that way for a long, long time. You go out there and look at used RVs that uh, you know are like you know ten plus years old with that kind of style cabinetry, and typically it holds up just fine. It, it really gets a bad rap because, in theory, it's not as good as something out there like a full lumber core, like wood into screws cabinetry. But you know what? For the average person in a camper like this, someone who maybe isn't necessarily full time and in it, it's going to handle just fine because you're, you know, you're not using it uh, like crazy every day. And as I was backing up there, I ran into a drawer. And I don't know if you noticed, but... I have my Adatus over there um, holding that uh, pantry door open, which means I just straight heel kicked that uh, plywood drawer behind me. And let me tell you, <clears throat> it is a sturdy drawer. But you notice how that might be a small sleeper, but I don't really think the sofa is going to be a primary sleeping space in this floor plan. 
I think that that can be a great storage space, though, almost like a, a toy box for the kids on a rainy day. Not to mention the drawers down there below the dinette. Oh, those are amazing. This is all sealed edge pressed membrane countertops, by the way. They just kind of give this a little bit of a, a sort of live edge look. Just kind of church it up in here a little bit. We do have a little bit of carpet in the slide, but we are ventless and carpetless in the main deck flooring. Uh, this also has a uh, 15,000 BTU uh, air conditioner system on here, which is uh, a little bit more powerful and obviously centralized, in case you weren't aware. Something that will help distribute that cold air more evenly through the RV. And speaking of cold stuff, that 12-volt compression fridge right there, whoo, that thing was billowing like little frostiness. Uh, it, it, so we're like 40 minutes from the RV shipping yards, and that thing was frozen solid already those active fridges are absolutely amazing now you got the handy little dowel rod style ladder here i'll tell you if you're my size that ain't exactly friendly on bare feet but if you're my size you're probably owning the camper or you're going to be in the lower bunk or the dinette and you can just put the kids in the upper bed now a couple good details here this is where i say like so far i've said a couple things like oh maybe the windows and maybe the cabinetry are something that you might want to consider here's something you should consider separate curtains for the upper and lower beds. If the lower bunk wants privacy, you pull the long curtain. If the upper bunk wants privacy, you pull both. Now, if the upper bunk wants privacy and the lower one doesn't, you just take this little curtain right here and y'all go like that. You just flip it up there and then you can slide the thing around. No big deal. Now, also I want to point out, you've got household and USB outlets for both beds, which I think is actually really really cool because this is the kind of camper especially with the camp kitchen outdoors i expect you're going to spend more time outside than inside but on a rainy day you get stuck inside uh, somebody was messaging me earlier today said i don't know what the deal is but every single time i go camping i get rained out uh well that's where having this big super slide is awful darn handy we got the big vent fan up here for some nice superior airflow and if you're uh, my size, you know, you could probably be six foot or shorter and your head would not need to be in that bubble. If you're a little bit bigger than that, your head's going to be in the skylight. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm going to keep saying it until they start doing something different. I love the full window in the entry door. I love these see-through, view-through, Invisiview, whatever you want to call them, entry doors, whatever stupid name I come up with on a given day. But it, when we're in the bathroom, please please give me a privacy shade right here also something you may not think about if you really need to and uh, you're going to set up shop here for a while you can just kick your feet out when you're sitting on the toilet like i am right here and you can have a chit chat with your neighbor jim while you're uh, working off the chili con carne obviously gross i don't recommend that nor do i want to see it um i don't want to be your neighbor jim <laughs> I don't think most people are going to have that issue, though, especially with the bigger fan above us. One thing, the reason I wanted to sit here, though, because you've already seen a picture of me doing the toilet selfie king thing. If you look at this, the toilet is like right up next to what I call the Cherokee shove. It's not a shower. It's not a tub. It's easy to step in. It's just deep enough to like give a baby a bath, but it will help keep the curtain kind of under control. And this is actually a good thing on this floor plan because what they allowed them to do was to move the toilet very close to the tub. But because you have a curtain and not a door, you've got all the elbow room in the world here. So maybe you lean this way or you lean this way to take care of business. This is a, a about as big person friendly as I think a bunkhouse bathroom is ever going to get. And I tell you, I am furious with myself right now. I'm furious with myself. Above the slide out, you have that uh, optional use electric blue accent light. The, I can't even tell you how many jokes I've missed opportunities on over the years uh, related to that thing. I mean, just off the top of my head, we got the electric slide. We got slide on to Electric Avenue. We got the uh, electric blue glue. I mean, this is without thinking. Imagine the kind of list we could create if we put our minds together, which makes me think, what kind of funny blue light puns can you come up with? I want to see these things in the comments. Come on, guys. <sighs> oh, well. Live and learn, right? Um, <laughs> this is not what I call an entertainment-focused floor plan because it is obviously set up 
in what I would call neck wrecker entertainment position. Like I'm sitting over here in the dinette and if you do that, yeah, that's not bad, but I don't think you're gonna wanna just chill out in the dinette to watch TV all day. I will tell you something that would make a dramatic difference here though, is if instead of that uh, fixed forward only viewing angle uh, slide mount style television mount, that's uh, obviously a very high level fancy technical term, I just busted out on you there. Um, if you just swap that off for like a swing arm mount, I think it would be far more conducive to some rainy day use. Now, this is a floor plan. I would actually, uh, I, I like the idea of sliding privacy doors on this one, but it, there's something you don't really realize is like the Alpha Wolf factory, they don't really use sliding pocket privacy doors a whole lot. So they tend to just use swinging doors. But when we get in the bedroom, you'll see there is room for a uh, uh, a sliding pocket door at the foot of the bed. And actually, why don't we just look at that right now? So when we first come in here, you know, nice open area where you can stand up and get dressed in the morning. Household and USB plugs on both sides. And when we look here, just like I said, you, there's room for pocket doors at the base. So you're going, dude, what gives? Why wouldn't they just go ahead and put pocket doors on this? And I think the answer has to... The, 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 I think the answer has to do with the length of the bed. So this is 60 inches wide. I'm just having a heck of a day with words today. But this is only 74 inches long. This is a short queen, a camp queen. I think if I had to guess... The team at Alpha wanted to leave this space open instead of occupy it with uh, pocket doors. They wanted to allow you the opportunity to swap this out and put a true queen bed in because we all know these factory mattresses are just phenomenal, right? Come on. I think they know a lot of people. One of the first things they're going to do is at least put a foam top around the bed, if not get a longer true queen bed in here. So they left you the room to do that. Pocket doors would seem nicer. But the swinging doors aren't stopping me from getting in and out of the RV. At least now I have an opportunity that pocket doors wouldn't have offered. So I think I get why they're doing this. But what do you, I mean, what would your preference be? Would you rather have pocket doors and a camp queen? Or would you like the opportunity for a true queen and you don't care about the swinging doors? Because, hey, they're doors and they're privacy. Which, by the way, um, one of our viewers recently here, he, he made a great point. He said, I really like to have true doors on my bedroom because I found it keeps the noise down better in my bedroom. Never really thought about it, but thinking back to all the different RVs I've been in, kind of makes sense. Now where this floor plan really takes it up a notch is the road mode accessibility. At a glance, it looks a little tight here. And yeah, maybe I've got to do a single shift sideways, slide to the left, then a slide to the right. But you can get to the, the refrigerator, the pantry, the bunks, the bathroom, and it doesn't matter which door you use, front door, back door, it's all the same. And where that's really handy is what if you're at like a storage facility where maybe you can't drop those stable steps down from one of the doors, you always have the other one, so it just gives you double the chances for the accessibility. Outside here, we're actually gonna start under that master bed because this has a huge pass-through compartment. You see the handy uh, battery disconnect switch right there next to the solar charge controller. You have two levels of solar, well, I guess technically three because no solar is, I suppose, technically a level of solar if we wanna get real, uh, you know, semantical. But uh, they offer a pair of simple uh, solar packages. You have a 50 watt or a 100 watt. I consider both to be just a solid battery tender. We tend to put the 50 watt package on these most of the time, but uh, adding an extra panel, really not a hard thing here for our team. Those uh, smoky glass doors just look amazing. And again, during the day, looking around, you maintain full privacy. You just may want to put a shade on one of those for evening or again in that bathroom over there. That's definitely an area I would like it. Um, good size patty wanting on this, and I love how it very clearly clears both of the entry doors. That is a very underrated feature a lot of people don't ever think about. This is, <laughs> caught my attention, a bright red uh, ice maker over here. Actually, it's also a water dispenser. I just realized that. Oh, wow. Wow. That is really cool. 
I, I tell you what, I can deal with the red color. I mean, I don't care that... I'm one of these people, I don't care if colors match. Like, I, my, my wife's like, you're wearing that to town? I'm like, yep. <laughs> wow, water dispenser too. Cool. This has a little, I call it dog dish sink, just a little uh, flip sink you can flip out of there, of course. You could always just take that completely out of there and use it. You know, there's a little waste basket so you could slide in there. Got the little uh, cooktop there with the propane cooker hooker coming off the sign. Outdoor entertainment station here. Uh, just, you might notice how it matches the uh, the TV mount inside. So if you do decide to add a TV to the camper, you could have one TV potentially float into multiple areas of the RV. And I mentioned it a few times, I think. But just to kind of reiterate, because that bathroom door is gaping wide open right now and it feels kind of like, ooh, I'm a little exposed over here. Remember, it has a deadbolt. You can totally lock that sucker down. You can maintain some privacy. We do like to option the rear cargo rack on the back of these. It has about a 200 pound capacity before the spare tire. So you're gonna wanna kind of budget there and not overload things. It's not so much weight like I'm 200 some odd pound dude. I can stand on that right now, it doesn't flinch. When you're going down the road and that's all the way, the furthest point behind the axle and then it starts bouncing, that's when it matters. Uh, the uh, RV does have a walkable roof. Normally we would option ladders onto these and the RV as we're looking at it is ladder prepped. Uh, it's possible later in the year, we'll start to get some back in stock with ladders. We ordered these with ladders. Unfortunately, ladders are just in a shortage situation right now. Now in front of that, you see the two bunk windows. You see there's an outside uh, camp shower. There is a black tank flush in that little uh, water hookup. And you see there's a big baggage door right there. Well, that right there is an extra little cargo space below the bunks. And just to kind of help you get an idea for how much space there is, turns out you can actually shove an entire salesperson in this thing. That is Mr. Brandon Carr. How you doing, Brandon? Give us a thumbs up if you can still breathe. All right, that is terrific. We will catch up with Brandon later. What's that? No, you got enough air. You're fine. Uh, okay, we'll catch up with Brandon in just a minute. First of all, I want to mention that this is slide awning ready. So if you choose to add one of those things, they've already kind of done the prep work for you. Um, it's, you know, still cost a couple hundred bucks to have those put on, but it is now just uh, a little bit less than what it otherwise would be. And hey, anywhere that I can save a little money, I'm going to be cool with things like that. Up front here, um, somebody must have been wondering why the lights were on because they opened this up to discover there was a battery on it. I had that all closed up looking nice for you, but never mind all that. What I want to show you over here, and then I probably should go let Brandon out of that compartment, <laughs> is the fact that we do have an enclosed heated belly. I'm coming, buddy. So I hope you appreciate the, uh, the look at her today. A couple little fun moments here. Uh, we try to have a good time. We try to remember that camping's supposed to just be about having fun, you know? Now, if you need anything, remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else. I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can check for pricing and availability, whether you're curious or whether you're serious, right there and never even have to pick up the phone to talk to anybody. Um, we don't need your social security number or anything like that. I don't think we're quite to that point. And uh, if you appreciate what we do here for you, make sure you hit the like button on this video, subscribe and follow along. Leave me a couple comments. Let me know what you think about it, good, bad, ugly, or otherwise. Short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun. Look forward to meeting you, everyone. Mm -hmm.